Hi, and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm here in the National Portrait Gallery in London for the Taylor Wessing Photographic Portrait Prize. Behind me, you'll see a piece by Graham Robertson, who is an amazing photojournalist that works for some of the country's top newspapers. He's going to be joining me on the show today, and we're going to be discussing everything that he shoots, from musicians to politicians, wars to World Cups. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbear. Hi Graham, thanks so much for um, inviting us into your home today to have a little chat about your work. Uh, I love what you do. You're a, you're a photojournalist, but you cover absolutely everything. Such a wide variety of work. Was that something that you always wanted to do, or how did you end up in photography? Um, well, I do cover a lot of different things. A lot of different <laughs> things. Everything I can think of, you covered it. Um, I think that. Uh, when I was younger, um, I always wanted to sort of specialise yeah. and I realised that if I sort of specialise in something, it's much harder to, to perhaps get an opportunity. Mm. So I, I, um, I tried my hardest to sort of try and do as many things as, 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 I, as I could really. And when I became an apprentice photographer, um, I was doing everything. I was doing football, yeah. uh, PR work, news events features and yeah. and I really like doing something different every day. Because I mean like you're in The Guardian now which is probably the most prestigious role in the UK for a photojournalist. I know you trained as a you know you're a darkroom assistant but do you have any like other qualifications that would have landed it or was it just on the basis that your work was amazing they were like yeah we'll give, we'll give you the job? I've got pretty much no qualifications. Okay. Um, I you know I went to university and went to college when I was very young and but then I'd done an apprenticeship I think my training was really, really good. I worked uh, as a darkroom assistant, mm. um, which was a fantastic um, experience because I was just looking at photographs all the time, yeah. which made me a really good editor. Great, yeah. Um, and then when I got an, apprentice, uh, an apprenticeship up in Dundee in Scotland, yeah. uh, the photographer was on the sort of broadsheet sort of side. He was very creative. He had really good um, rules put in place. He was very strict with me. Um, and uh, he taught me the proper way to sort of to deal with sort of situations. He taught me really well. What's and the proper way to deal? What kind of like you know when you, is it when you arrive on location and meeting someone? Yeah, just the the process. He taught me how to sort of have a sort of process, how to uh, gauge my my subjects, how to to make sure I cover a job properly, um, not to get too excited, and and to have certain things to do on every job. And he gave me a sort of formula. And then, then after that formula, he would de then I could be creative. Because yeah. uh, if sometimes the creative stuff might not work, but if you do a creative thing and it doesn't work, then you've got nothing. Yeah, so you have a so fallback you, so of safe So you have some options. sort of a safe part and a, and a creative part and this, that. Yeah. And it really taught me well. The Guardian, I suppose, send you out on so many different assignments. They've given you lots of opportunities. Was there, is there anything in particular that you've loved? Any one project? Because, I mean, you cover everything. You cover musicians and politicians and, you know, the portrait side of things. I mean, is there anything maybe in your work along the way that you favoured, that you'd always angle towards or...? You know, I do enjoy everything. Yeah, OK. Um, I think that the past I was... Um, I did a lot of reportage, kind of abroad, wars and famines and, and yeah. you know, lots of sort of civil wars or real sort of conflict sort Absolute of stuff. Uh, and I slightly got disillusioned by that. How uh, so in that like? I don't know. I felt that, that a lot of people were getting into that because they thought that if people took photographs of, of, of pain and suffering, then that would be good photography. And I, and I okay. disagree. Yeah. I disagree that just because you take pictures of somebody firing a gun or, yeah. or getting killed, that that would be a good photograph. I don't agree with that. When I, when I joined The Guardian, mm. I knew that, that, that my, my role would change. Mm. I knew that, one, they didn't have the sort of huge budgets to go and send a photographer away for six months to, to, cover, to, cover, this, to yeah. cover that. I knew that we, my, 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 my work would, would change. But yeah. I, so when I started doing portraits and stuff, I really got interested in, in the control. Yeah. You know the control that I had. Yeah. If a news photography, if it doesn't work, you can you can you can make your own luck. You know, there's not there's nothing like you know you, yeah. you can't be a lucky photographer. You need to research it and be in the right position to make your own luck. You know, if a photographer walks into a room, and shows that they're not in control 
then that person won't. You, you've lost that. You've lost that sort of portrait. You know. So it's confidence. It's confidence. You know, there's been situations that I, the PR have said, "You've got one minute." Yeah. And I've put, not even picked my cameras up and sat and chatted for two minutes. Yeah. And then I've spent the next half an hour photographing him or wow. her. Because so. you just find that kind of common ground. And they enjoy it, and I they, And then they relax or they say to the PR, oh, it's all right, well, let's do 10, you know. Yeah. So it's a control thing. And what I really, really enjoy about that kind of, that portrait photography is that, that the control is completely up to me. If I don't get the shot, if yeah. I, you know, it's completely my fault. Tell us then about the equipment that you use to get the shot, whether you've got one minute or you've got, you know, a month to plan a shoot, what kind, what would you carry around with you? What's your go-to equipment bag? I shoot in Leicas. You shoot in Leicas? I shoot on M... I don't think we've had a Leica shooter yet on the show. That's good. So <laughs> I shoot on uh, M9s. Wow, OK. Uh, and I've also got um, uh, a Hasselblad with digital back and I've got a Canon... Um, uh, 5D Mark III. Wow, okay, brilliant. I, I had this thing that I wanted to slow my my sort yeah. of reportage kind of stuff Take really down things, yeah. and, and sort of enjoy it a little bit more. Yeah. And the and the Leica really gave that to me. Oh, uh, wow. uh, you know, uh, I used to shoot completely manual cameras mm. back in, you know, when I started yeah. and I loved it. And I sometimes think with the digital, sort of how digital has went, that a lot of people take far too many pictures. Yeah, just shoot off just a hundred and can. hope for the best in one. Like. And, and with a rangefinder camera or a Hasselblad, yeah. there's, there's just, you can't do that. Yeah, you need down. to really pick your pictures, make sure that they're correct. You, you've got that sort of, you know, yeah. uh, and, and that's a beautiful thing for me. And the pictures that uh, are in that project with the blind children, the ones that are yeah. in the telewazing, all the all the portraits, all the reportage stuff that goes along with that is all shot in the Leica. Sometimes when you take a picture of a famous person mm. and you get your Leica out, um, you would be amazed what they would say. They would say, "Oh, what kind of camera is that?" Or, yeah, or just, and they they say, "Oh, that's the curious." And and they, automatically you have that maybe a uh, maybe a different thing to talk about. Or uh, I get uh, it. Yeah. So. But I love, I love shooting on, 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 on the Leica. Was that a commission? Did someone send you over there or was it a personal project and you just wanted to go and do it? I mean, what, the blind, that... the blind? Yeah. That's but... just my stuff and that's what is really important for me. I, I, and the Guardian really, really like that I am doing what they want me to do. Like, they supported this project completely for me. And I didn't, it wasn't a money-making exercise. It wasn't, you know, I didn't make, it was... A personal thing, yeah. and it's really important for Absolutely. me. Absolutely, it's and really it, important. It's and it makes me a better photographer, yeah. a better person. Uh, it makes me, you know, that sort of personal stuff um, uh, that has a sort of tagline of a sort of story that I can help yeah. is really important. Would, would you have any advice? I suppose I'm looking for 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 amateurs that are wanting, you know, that maybe have the skills already, but just can't break the boundaries into professional to to photojournalism. I think the best bit of advice is not to try and break into it, but just do your own thing. So just continually just yeah. keep doing well, your own Well, projects is a really good thing. Having a good idea for a project and going and doing that project and fulfilling that project. Yeah. If, it, if you really enjoy that process, yeah. it's like everything. If you enjoy a process, you put, your, you put really your everything into it. Yeah. And you don't care about if anyone likes it or sees it or I bet you that if you have that uh, impression, yeah. People will love it, and you, that's you that's it. how you break into it. Because okay. some people be like, "That's really interesting." See what this guy's spent the last year doing. Or yeah. Something. And then all of a sudden, you know, and you've really enjoyed that, so it's not been a waste of time.